I'll talk now to Marco Martins. He's managing partner at Harness. Since you are seven years in Cayman Islands, what are the main concerns about compliance all over the world? Uh, the, what we see as the main concerns of compliance around the world revolve around the basic issues of understanding uh, the wealth that is flowing through the financial system. And in essence, what that means is understanding who uh, the, the, the owner or the source of the funds uh, is and understanding the source of the funds itself. So understanding how the money got to the individual who is the client, uh, uh, you know, who is your client or a financial institution's client. That's true for a bank, it's true for um, a fund manager, it's true for a broker, it's true for anyone who works within finance. Around the world, all of us have the same obligations of knowing our clients, knowing who they are, confirming and being able to confirm their identities. And all of us have the duty to understand where, their, where the wealth that is coming into the financial system was generated. How is it that someone got to that money? Where was the money generated? How was it generated? Um, and the, 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 the basic focus is to ensure that we don't allow illicit money into the system. That, that's probably the main objective of of the entire exercise is to make sure we don't allow, you know, be it terrorist financing or drug money or illicit trade money to come into the financial system. And once it's in the financial system to be cleaned. And then someone who was engaged in something that was illegal is now able to do something with that wealth. So a, a lot of compliance is, is focused on those two things, who and what is the source of funds. And that's true in, in any jurisdiction, that in any place where uh, entities want to operate within uh, a well-respected and sustainable business, that's what they will do. So that's, that's the commonality we see around the world. And concerning regulation in Asia? Um, regulation in Asia, it, 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 it varies quite a bit. If, if you're in Hong Kong and you're dealing with the issues of reintegration into China, then you're going to have a certain amount of regulatory convergence between those two markets. Um, if you're in Australia, then you're dealing with very different issues. You're dealing with uh, a, a more mature financial market, and you probably are going back to the fundamental concerns of um, knowing um, who and knowing what the source of funds are. The other thing that every regulator the world over focuses on, and Asia is no different from Europe or North America or South America, is people want to understand the risk that is inherent in any financial structure. So understanding the types of trades that are taking place, the types of structures that are taking place, um, understanding leverage and how much leverage is uh, encased within these structures, so from the financial management perspective, for the regulators who have an obligation either to protect investors or to protect the system, the financial system, they need to understand how money is being managed, how money is being deployed, uh, how risk is being managed, and how leverage is being uh, analyzed. What about law for financial market here in South America and specifically uh, here in Brazil? Um, there, there, there is a lot of movement towards laws which um, enable the regulators or the authorities to get to the information that they need to get in order to do the jobs we're asking them to do. So if the job is to manage the financial risk, the systemic risk in, in complex financial markets, then you're going to see regulation, and we've, see, we've seen regulation, uh, about enforcing certain rules. So it could be laws, for example, uh, which restrict the amount of investment in, say, equity investments, in riskier investments. Uh, it can be requiring uh, vehicles which invest in more risky investments to have a higher level of uh, investor qualification. So to be a super qualified investor or to be a sophisticated investor. Um, other, other things we see in Latin America are rules which are designed to ensure uh, compliance with tax laws. So, for example, uh, uh, Common Reporting Standards, or CRS for short, 
is a global standard that will apply to currently at the first phase of the launch of CRS next year. There are 98 countries that are signatories to the first phase of CRS. CRS focuses on exchanging information on tax residency across borders. What does that mean? If I'm, uh, if I'm a Brazilian person and I live in the UK, the UK is my tax residency. Um, if I have an asset outside of the UK and I don't report that, then I'm violating British rules of taxation. Conversely, if I'm an English person and I live in Brazil, this is my home for tax purposes. And if I have assets elsewhere that I'm not reporting in Brazil, then I could be liable for not having reported those assets. So CRS attempts to cement into tax compliance the, 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 the concept of tax residency. And you're a tax resident generally where you reside. There are exceptions to that. The US taxes its citizens on a global basis. So if you're a US person, you're going to be taxed wherever you are. But for, for most of the other countries, um, if you no longer live in the country, then you're no longer liable for tax in the country, but you should be liable for tax wherever you live. And CRS was designed to automate the exchange of tax information between different countries. That's a major uh, uh, initiative in the area of making sure that we fight against tax evasion. How competitive is Brazil with the regulation here comparing to other countries? I, I'm not a Brazilian lawyer, so I'm not able to give you detail about the, 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 the extent of regulation or the nature of regulation. However, uh, we work a lot with Brazilian clients, be it institutions or individuals, and we hear from time to time the same uh, concerns or the same um, issues that people have to deal with. So, you know, certain, certain amount of the bureaucracy of running a business or the bureaucracy with employing uh, uh, people or the bureaucracy with being able to access different types of assets uh, easily and without restrictions. Being free to choose what you invest in and how you run your portfolio. So there are, you know, there are different issues that, um, you, you know, it, it could be that a person in Brazil who wants to manage a certain uh, financial asset or a company or something, that they, if they looked at other jurisdictions that have more streamlined uh, regulation, that they could find the differential. It could be easier to run a business, say, in the United States or in England or in China or wherever else. Um, I think we, you know, we, we, one thing all of us who work in Brazil see is the impact that political instability has on financial markets, on businesses. Um, you look at growth rates in China, you look at, look at growth rates in India, and those are six, seven times what the growth rates are in Brazil. Brazil at the moment is expecting a contraction of the economy of over 3%. India will grow by nearly 7%. China will grow, grow by nearly 7%. Some of that is, is, is due to the political instability in Brazil. Some of it is due to the regulatory burdens that businesses face in Brazil. Some of it is due to the mismanagement of public accounts. Uh, huge deficits create magnificent costs and risks. So more than laws, what we see impacting Brazil and Brazilian businesses are the, the, the political and the regulatory uh, issues which cause waste or mismanagement, uh, which make it much more difficult for businesses to grow, to hire, uh, to, you know, to generate a profit, things which are normal in other places. Th those will be the main issues that, I, that we see. Marco, thank you so much for this interview. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Luciane Miranda to Duque Escape TV.